Energy Parks. Welcome to the first episode of Destination Recreation. In this episode, I'll be taking you through the Murakami Museum and Japanese Gardens. The Murakami is one of the most popular Palm Beach County destinations. It welcomes visitors from all over the world. Stepping into the Murakami is like stepping into Japan. You can soak in the Japanese culture, appreciate its history, and experience the beauty all in one place. And it's just a short drive away. So in this episode, I'll be taking you through a typical day at the Murakami, starting with the museum. We are a unique institution. Uh, we're the only collecting institution in the United States that's devoted to Japanese art only. We have about 4,500 square feet of gallery space divided into three different galleries, the main gallery, the Miyazu gallery, and the Konkan gallery. We can present materials from uh, archaeological periods to contemporary art, both um, from Japan and from artists working in the U.S. and other countries in the world. We Joy takes us through some pieces in the current Above the Fold exhibit. And in his work Pantasia, he represents one of his techniques of origami, which is um, these triangular pieces of paper all folded, um, interconnected. They look like a unified organism. A piece by Richard Sweeney in, uh, in our exhibition, Above the Fold, represents a uh, more three-dimensional sculptural approach to origami. The museum devotes this space to recent acquisitions, whether it's donations or purchases, and showcases a variation of media. Pieces of, uh, from different periods of time, contemporary, um, things that might be considered fine art, and things that might be considered um, anthropologically, ethnological pieces, or folk art, some people might say. The original museum building, the Yamato Kan, also features two exhibits. What you can see in that space now is an exhibition called um, Japan Through the Eyes of a Child, and you can see a section devoted to um, the history of the Yamato colony and the, with the focus on George Morikami and the other colonists. A little history about the Morikami. In the early 1900s, a group of young Japanese farmers came to the area and formed an agricultural colony called Yamato. The colony failed and almost all of its members went back to Japan. But in the 1970s, a settler named George Murakami donated his land to the county with the wish that it become a park that preserves the memory of the Yamato colony. Palm Beach County opened the Murakami Museum in 1977. The gardens were added to the grounds in 2001, and it's become a very significant cultural hub ever since. So let's go check out those gardens. As a living exhibition, the gardens complement the museum exhibitions. Exhibitions and collections rotate every few months. The garden's landscape architect designer, Hoichi Kurisu, ensured that no matter where you stand in the gardens, you have a beautiful vista view. There are six historical gardens on the Murakami property. Each tells its own history about its specific time period in Japan, and each offers its own unique experience. In 1999, Palm Beach County uh, had a vision to expand the Murakami Museum and Japanese Gardens. We opened our first phase in 2000 of six distinct period Japanese gardens. In 2001, we expanded somewhat further. Today, we have about 200,000 guests visiting the museum and gardens annually. And each time when people visit, they get to experience an entirely different um, garden experience. All exhibitions on Murakami property are given special care daily by Murakami staff, from meticulously raking and caring for the gardens to talking to guests about every aspect of the exhibits. We have flowering gardens, which are generally um, rarer in Japan. We have most of our gardens that focus on the elements of rock and water. So you go through some of our rock gardens, and you'll experience some of our waterfalls as you experience the garden. 
The Morikami hosts a number of events throughout the year. There's the Lantern Festival in October, Hatsume in spring, and Oshigatsu, which celebrates the new year. At all of these festivals, you can enjoy Japanese cuisine, drumming, music, ceremonies, and more to help you celebrate and appreciate the Japanese culture. Because you will get hungry exploring everything the Murakami has to offer, luckily there's an on-site cafe called the Cornell Cafe and it's located inside the museum building. It offers everything from rolls, sushi, tofu, noodles, and more. We're going to enjoy our lunch, but thanks for watching Destination Recreation. For more information about PBC Parks and the Murakami Museum in Japanese Gardens, visit pbcparks.com.